Hey, in this video I'd like us to talk about how to choose a martial arts gym that's right for you. Now, all of us have different reasons why we start doing martial arts. Some people want to learn how to defend themselves. Some people are going to want to just have fun and try new activity. Other people have like fitness related goals. Maybe they want to lose weight and get in shape. Maybe they want to feel like they're strong. Maybe it's an emotional goal. Maybe they want to test themselves, learn a martial art and so that they can compete. And even further than that, some people are going to want to do it professionally as a competitor and be a professional fighter. No matter which of those reasons applies to you, this video is relevant. And the reason I decided to make this video is, well, number one is the end of the year and many of us are going to have New Year's resolutions that are related to fitness. I see an influx of people in January all the time at my uh, martial arts gym. And just to clarify, if you don't already watch my channel, I go to an MMA gym, but I mostly stick to kickboxing classes, although I just started doing some jujitsu here and there. And to me, as a person who is entirely brand new to martial arts as of three years ago, the most dangerous aspect of the sport is that there's no regulation whatsoever as to who can become a martial arts coach, especially in MMA and kickboxing and Muay Thai. If I decide to open up a school and people trust me and give me their money, I can totally run a fight gym. It doesn't mean I'm a great instructor, it doesn't mean I'm a great coach, it doesn't mean I know what I'm doing, it doesn't mean I'm a good person. And because as an athlete, the bond that you create with your coach is very like almost that of a father figure or mother figure if your coach is a woman, it's very important that you choose the right martial arts gym. Not to mention that martial arts is not a game. If you go in there, even if you just train, you can get injured. So it's very important. They just take care of yourself. You got, we gotta take care of ourselves out here. It's a dangerous world. It's not a joke. It's not me being dramatic. If you think about it, the whole point of martial arts is that you're learning to hurt somebody else. So inevitably, you're gonna attract people that are violent, that are aggressive. And you don't have to be aggressive or violent and be an abusive person. So that's why to me it's so important that beginners especially learn how to choose the right gym, know what things to look out for. And now that I've been training for three years, there's literally gyms in LA that I've heard of that I know for myself I will never set foot in because they have abusive environments. And so I would never want somebody else to go through that and learn that the hard way. So anyway, let's just get started. <laughs> First of all, what do you want to look for in a gym? Let's start with the head coach, who is usually, but not always, probably going to be the owner of the gym. Long story short, the head coach is going to set the tone for everyone under them, and then everyone under them, and everyone under them, right? They're just going to set the tone for the entire environment of the gym. For me, the most important aspect is you want the head coach, at the very minimum, just the head coach, to have been a pro fighter. That means they understand not just training, not just competing, but everything that relates to it. A whole entire lifetime experience of training, technique, dealing with training partners, dealing with coaches, dealing with promoters, dealing with injuries, dealing with all the emotions, with all the business aspects, sponsors, money, how promoters treat you, your level of experience, are you ready to fight? You want the head coach of the gym, at least, to have been a pro fighter. Especially if you want to eventually compete, if you want to like know that you're learning good self-defense and that you can handle yourself in a dangerous situation. Of course, if you want to be a pro fighter one day, you want to learn from another pro fighter. If you live in a very small town, this is going to be harder to find. But thanks to the internet, all of this research is done much more easily. Now my second point kind of related to this is that you want all the other coaches that are under the head coach to have been fighters at the very minimum amateurs because you don't want somebody coaching you in a fight or in a self-defense scenario by somebody who's never experienced those things. Like if you're going to ask me to do certain behaviors, I want to know that you've been there and you know what you're doing as well. Now the final aspect related to coaches which I think is the most important one yet it's going to be kind of tricky to figure out is that you want your coaches to be good people 
especially again, like I said, the head coach. No one is perfect. We definitely don't want anybody who exhibits abusive behavior emotionally, physically, or sexually towards you or anyone in the gym. Like I said, the head coach, the coaches under the head coach, they're just gonna set the tone for the entire environment of the gym and how people treat one another. So you wanna look for good characteristics. An issue with being a beginner in martial arts is that it's very easy to think that because somebody is knowledgeable that they're a good person. And these are two completely separate things. You can be a very talented, knowledgeable, capable martial artist and you can be an asshole, abusive to people in the gym, abusive to people you run into in everyday life. And you just don't want people like that setting the tone for the gym. You're in an environment where you're trying not to get hurt, but yet you're learning to hurt your teammates. You want somebody who's looking out for you. Not to mention, one day you might wanna compete. You want a coach who is has your best interests at heart. So you wanna see a consistent pattern of the coaches in the gym caring for one another, caring for their students, being supportive. You don't have to be perfect to be a good person. If you see any abuse, any signs of emotional abuse, putting people down, letting fighters injure one another consistently, run. <laughs> Do not stay in that gym. Go to a better gym. Find, find a place that is more encouraging, more supportive because you already have enough going on with martial arts in itself that you're getting hurt and it hurts to get hit in class it hurts to even catch as you're learning sometimes that you don't need any further abuse from anyone in the gym and you want to be in an environment where like if a person if a training partner goes too hard on you in training you want to be able to have that trust with your coach that you can bring up the issue talk through the issue maybe you even want to talk to your training partner there are so many levels that the long story short is that you want to be in a supportive environment in a safe environment as much as a martial arts gym can be another huge sign of a good gym is that you want to see that they have different levels of learning you want to go into a class as a total beginner and be learning the fundamentals the biggest red flag is if you as a beginner who knows nothing go into a class with other beginners and you start doing really flashy techniques, superman punch, back spinning fist, question mark head kick. What that shows is that this coach or whoever developed the program doesn't have enough knowledge to take you from a beginner all the way to a professional one step at a time. You want to see that progression. You want to see in other people that go to the gym, you want to see total beginners and you want to see more experienced comp competitors or lifetime martial artists. You want to see a range of skill and it's especially the best if that gym offers different levels of classes. At my gym, we are a small gym, so we only have fundamental classes, intermediate level classes, and then all level classes. The all level classes, the level of expertise that we learned that day or level technique is going to depend on who's in the room. So if you're a total beginner and you go to an all levels class at my gym, and let's say there's mostly the regulars and we know what's going on you're probably gonna learn a little bit more complex things than if you went to a fundamentals class and every day you know everyone there is new that day but you're still gonna be dealing with the fundamentals and you're not gonna be you shouldn't be thrown into a deep end and be learning angles and flashy kicks and anything like that and on the other side of this coin if you are somebody that is very consistent in your training and your um you have mastered the fundamentals you want to know that in that same gym with those same coaches there's room for you to learn once you have mastered the fundamentals then at my gym at least we start developing more complex techniques more complex footwork learning on training both stances learning just more complex things and I feel very confident that I could stay at my gym for my entire life and I will continue to progress. And that's the feeling that you want to have anywhere you go. Another good sign to look for in a martial arts gym, at any gym really, is that there are good boundaries in place. That means 
the coaches are not dating their students, especially not the head coach, please. And especially not wild differences in ages. Like if it's people over 30 and they're, there's one coach dating another student who's also over 30. I tend to think that is more, I tend to give them the benefit of the doubt and know that there isn't some kind of power play or abusive relationship at hand but again you just want to go into a gym where especially as a woman you're going to be looked at as an athlete and they're going to be investing on your progress and not seeing what they can get from you if the me too movement has taught us anything is that people in power should not be dating the people they hold power over end of the story <laughs> another area in which boundaries are very important is things like hygiene you're working in close quarters with other people especially if you're doing jiu-jitsu if you're somebody if your training partners never shower you don't want to train with them anymore you know you're gonna be extremely put off you might stop going to the gym because you don't want to be rude so you want to be able to um, approach your coach about anything that bothers you and that they're gonna take action when i signed the waiver at my gym when i was new you sign a waiver and you say you, at my gym especially it says you have to keep up your level of hygiene and that of course you're you accept to like getting choked and kicked and etc etc but it made me feel so comfortable when i was like okay like they care and in my three years that i've been in my gym those boundaries also apply to not being an asshole if somebody if even if a professional fighter comes in and he's an asshole and he's hurting everybody in training and he refuses to train to train differently he'll get kicked out or at the very minimum people are just not gonna like them and they're gonna feel out of place and they're gonna leave on their own so again you just want to look for signs that is a uh, environment that is one in which you're gonna thrive they're gonna be supportive about you they're gonna care about you A lot of people think that to be a great fighter, you just have to go hard and be aggressive and be violent 100% of the time. Well, you're getting hit in the brain with every single punch. How many hits do you think that your body can take if you want to be a competitor, let alone a professional fighter, let alone just a normal human being <laughs> that just wants to go about their day injury free? If I go crazy on my training partner, and I actually injure them, they're not gonna come back the next day. And when they come back, they're not gonna wanna train with me because they don't trust me to not hurt them. So you wanna be in an environment, again, that is so, there's support among teammates. And not only support, but for the way in which you learn the most is when you're in a state of playfulness. In a, you don't want to feel like you're fighting for your life or trying to survive every single day in the gym because then you're going to learn absolutely nothing. You're not going to progress. You want to feel relaxed. You want to trust your teammates that if they, let's say they do go too hard with one hit, they're going to notice that they hit you. They're going to stop. They're going to say, are you okay? Do you want to continue? And then, yeah, you're going to go back to playful sparring. And even if you're a professional fighter, this is what you want from your coaches, your teammates. You don't want to be in an environment where your body is a heavy bag. If you want to go to a gym where they have heavy bags and you just want to hit it, then go do that. But if you actually want to learn to fight and you want to have a human being in front of you and learn how to hit and not get hit while somebody tries to hit you at the same time, which is the highest uh, achievement of martial arts in my opinion, you're gonna need to learn to be a good training partner. Now, of course, as an aside, if you're a fighter, competitor, or pro, yes, you do wanna be sparring hard, but only when you're preparing for competition. The person you're fighting is not gonna be nice to you. The person you're fighting is trying to knock you out, trying to submit you if you're doing jiu-jitsu. They're trying to stop a fight. They're trying to get you to quit. So, of course, you do have to train under the circumstances of a real fight and get as close to you as you can to the speed and the power of a fight but if you don't have a fight coming up you're literally just wrecking your body for no reason and you're most likely not advancing as a martial artist because when you fight for your life for survival 
there's no moments for being playful there's no moments for hey let me see if this spinning back fist will land spinning back kick question mark kick no you're you're fighting for your life right it's you cannot survive as a human being and thrive as a martial artist in a gym like that where they're going hard every day at least not without getting a brain injury basically in the time that you're there and that's not something you want whether you're a competitor or just a person looking to lose weight you don't want a brain injury or any other life lasting injury right lifelong injury you want to minimize the huge the biggest dangers of martial arts during training but of course having that balanced side that you do have competitors in the gym who are going to help you train for a fight i hope that makes sense the last sign that i'm going to share with you for a good martial arts gym and again which i have been kind of talking about already and to me is just the biggest most important sign you want to be in a supportive environment you want to be in a place where coaches teachers teammates want the best for you you want to be somewhere where you're not being forced to fight there's a difference between your coach approaching you and saying hey you've been training here for a while i think you would do very well in competition would you like to try it out and compete there's a big difference between your coach approaching you saying something like that and somebody just saying like forcing you to fight and saying that you should fight you have to fight especially if we've already said like if you've already shown hesitation you should never be forced to compete period that is a big red flag if anybody's trying to get you to fight i have heard like crazy stories of people being told by their coaches on and under three months of MMA training, that they are ready for their first fight. No, you're not. Doesn't matter who you are, you're not ready. <laughs> I've heard stories of coaches allowing somebody on their first fight to fight against somebody that had 29 fights. What? This is not a coach, like this is your enemy. They, there's something in it for them. If they're trying to force you to take fights you're not ready for, try to minimize, the actual danger that you're exposing yourself to in a fight, in a competition, if, what that means is they're trying to further their career as a coach and build their experience, or they're trying to make money off your ticket sales if you're at that level of fighting. Long story short, you should never feel pressured to fight in a gym. You should never even feel pressured to spar because no one can make you fight when you're in that ring. It should come from your heart. Another big sign for me is that the coaches or the teachers in the gym offer their knowledge freely. When you're a beginner, you're gonna ask a lot of questions. What's a big sign of somebody being abusive is they don't like to be questioned. They feel insecure by your, and they feel they get personal, get very defensive when you ask questions. So if you notice that as a beginner, you're asking, you're gonna, number one, Beginners ask very stupid questions. <laughs> uh, not just like stupid questions, but just like a lot of questions. Like, why don't we hit this way? Why don't we move our body in this way? And they're just being beginners. They're just, you know, I, I tend to get paired up with all the new girls that show up to the gym, especially if they're tiny like me. So at this point, I know that they just ask a lot of questions. And it's not, you don't, but I guess what I'm trying to say, the important thing is you don't want the coach on the other side. If you're that beginner asking those dumb questions, you don't want that coach to be getting defensive, not allowing you to ask questions, not allowing you to question their technique, because that just says who they are in life. And I just think that's a big sign of insecurity. And again, the worst pairing of emotions is insecurity and aggression if you're an insecure person and you feel attacked you're gonna hurt somebody else so you you want your coach to just be okay answering your questions make you feel like yeah just comfortable you know just um you're gonna ask a lot of dumb questions <laughs> one big sign i noticed um of this supportive environment for me in my gym was that Nobody holds back their knowledge. 
In other situations in life, I felt like other teachers didn't fully tell me the answer to my question because they saw me as competition or they saw me as, you know, they want to hoard all of their knowledge. They, they have fear that if they give up their knowledge, they're no longer going to be an authority or who knows. The important thing is, is that you want to know that you're in an environment where they support your growth and where there's going to be an unlimited amount of progress that you can do. You don't want to hit a point where like your coach is getting jealous that you're doing amazing competition and you're going to make it further than them in their career. You want to know that your, that your coaches are happy for you no matter if you just train every day for weight loss, for fun, or if one day you want to be a pro fighter. Because again, it's going to allow you to actually grow exponentially without a limit. And your coach is having that kind of approach towards technique, towards training, towards the sport, the competition. Again, trickles down and your training partners are going to want you to succeed. Because when your training partner succeeds and they get better in training, like yeah, you're going to get your ass kicked a little bit more the next days. But then you're going to level up and figure out how to be better than what they just learned and it's gonna it's like a back and forth of you get better i get better you get better i get better and again you just want to be in an environment that everybody has that mindset because then your growth is unlimited now how do you actually go about finding an amazing gym the good news is is that most of us have access to the internet and most gyms are gonna have a website and they're gonna have all their stuff listed and all their information and you can do a lot of research on your own without ever setting foot in the gym as a beginner there's nothing scarier than setting foot on a martial arts gym and you know nothing and you know no one and you feel like why would I be here um, it's scary so you want to do a lot of the research before you show up what I personally did was look in Yelp and look to see which gyms are close to me and of those, I singled out which gyms I thought were the top picks. And to me, again, the top picks meant that they have pro fighters or at the very minimum, amateur fighters on their roster as coaches. And most gyms are going to allow you to take one free class before you sign up for their membership. And so what you want to do is actually take them up on their offer. You want to contact them, set up your appointment, have that free class, and compare how each gym treated you. I noticed which gyms immediately replied to my email, and I mean immediately, like within hours to tw you know a day. Within a day, they replied to me. They were very friendly. Like yes, come check out our gym. If I call them, I noticed what was their attitude when they dealt with me. If I set foot into the gym, I noticed that what was their opinion of me, how they treated me their opinion but just like how did they treat me and compare all the different gyms now my experience i don't think i've said this on my channel but i completely started by pure coincidence with martial arts because i started dating somebody who is a martial arts trainer so they had their own gym which is a very good number one good sign they're dating somebody who's not in their gym but once um we started dating i tried the sport and i really liked it I'm totally going off on a tangent, but it reminded me when I used to be a dancer and that's why I've continued to do martial arts because it really feels like dancing to me. But anyway, what that meant is that, okay, now I have one experience of one gym. When I started doing my research like I'm telling you to do, um, I went to a second gym and they, number one, did not reply to my email. And when I showed up, they didn't take me seriously. Like. Um, I could just totally tell in their faces like the guy didn't take me seriously, he didn't care that I was interested in learning or taking a class. Um, so immediately I was like put off by that. Um, I further followed up by phone because I'm trying to fucking take my free class. God. And then once I talked to them on the phone, the girl I spoke with was trying to sell me on this like strength and conditioning package after me telling her for multiple times that all I want to do is train kickboxing what that told me is that for whatever reason that gym does not have enough knowledge 
for me to want to for me to learn one martial arts for every single day somebody is trying to sell you onto some program that has nothing to do with what the martial art you actually want to train that's a very big red flag and at that point i didn't even bother going for the free class because my whole point was that i want to learn kickboxing why am i going to be doing strength and conditioning if you're a pro fighter and you're at that level yes you should be doing strength and conditioning or or maybe even at the amateur level but if i'm a straight up beginner i just want to learn to do martial arts like you want to go one step at a time just learn one martial art if a gym is not able to teach you one martial art day after day they don't know enough the third gym i try to contact they never reply to my emails or my calls so i was like whatever and then the third gym or fourth gym by then was the gym i go to now dynamics mma they were friendly from day one within 24 hours they replied to my email when i arrived at the gym they're like were happy to see me not like overly kissing my ass or anything but just like a just like a human being like they were just like hi how are you this is like the gloves you're gonna wear these are the shin guards you're gonna wear this is where we put our shoes whatever it was just like a normal interaction po positive normal interaction and especially because i already have one other experience of actually training in a gym at the very minimum this was so far ahead it's so much better that I was like, I'm satisfied this is within a mile of my home or my apartment at the time. I love, I, I like the coach, like the first impression I have of them is friend, they're friendly, they're knowledgeable, they're supportive, like perfect. What, what more could I want as a beginner? And that's really all you want as a beginner because if you even if you advance and you outgrow your gym, like let's say you you learn everything that your coach knows and you want to move forward and compete and or even be a pro fighter, you want to have a good foundation when you move to a new gym. You don't want to get to a point in your in your com competitive career or your professional career where you switch gyms because you reached like the, the top of your gym and you're now going to a new gym and you have so many bad habits you don't have good fundamentals you don't have a, a good base of knowledge and you have to almost like fill in holes and in a way want to try to attempt to start from zero but you're not at zero because you have all these bad habits so yeah long story short you want to have fun you want to feel challenged but you don't want to feel unsafe emotionally physically or sexually like I said, I'm not being dramatic, especially as a woman um, going into a male-dominated arena. You want to know that you are safe and that people in the gym are going to have your back in case that some asshole comes in and tries to hurt you in any way. And again, many of you are going to say like I'm dramatic, but it's not. It's just the tea. If you're a beginner, I would love for you to go into an environment that is fun, safe, encouraging because... It, there's so much bullshit in the world that you don't want any more of it so anyway this video is getting way too long <laughs> thank you for watching if you still are subscribe if you like to continue to talk about world domination let me know in the comments how did you choose your own martial arts gym are you looking forward to the new years in terms of having fitness goals what are your goals what do you want to accomplish let me know let me know if you want to see more martial arts videos i'll see you in the next one thank you for watching